Hi, I'm Christian Brindle, and welcome to the Everything Medicare Podcast. What's up, Everything Medicare Podcast Nation? Hey, this is Christian Brindle. Wherever you are and however you might be listening to me today, thank you so much for taking the time to educate yourself on your Medicare choices. Uh, This is episode 253. Every single week, we bring you a podcast episode where we discuss your Medicare, your Medicaid, your Social Security, and everything that has to do with that golden age called retirement. Um, I have a very special guest here with me today, somebody that um, I've admired his work from afar for a little while. Um, and I, I thought it would be a great idea to kind of collaborate, um, kind of hear some of some of his insight and some of his expertise in the world of Medicare. Um, he might be able to share maybe a few messages that maybe, you know, he, he shares in a way that he might know something more than I do about a certain subject. So we thought it's always good to bring value to you, the audience. So you, that way you can kind of hear multiple different perspectives on things. Um, I have Andy Stamus here with me today, um, and he runs an agency called Medicare Mindset. And Andy's got a really good YouTube channel. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end. Um, but Andy, how are you? Great, Christian. How are you? I'm, 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 I'm doing good. Um, and I can't complain. But even if I did, nobody would listen, right? <laughs> right. right. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Hey, the pleasure's all mine. Um, I really kind of wanted to start off by maybe unpacking your story a little bit, right? Because so you run an agency. Um, what state are you in, by the way? I'm in Ohio, Cincinnati. Ohio. Got it. So Cincinnati, Ohio. So you run an agency, right? Um, you work with people on, on, with, on Medicare, same as we do. Um, and you have a YouTube channel. So And you put out content, ed- ben- educational content for, pe- for beneficiaries, people on Medicare to help them get educated on their choices. Um, did you, When did you start putting out that content? And how did you start off getting into the insurance industry and helping seniors? Yeah, well, I guess I'll start with the, the very beginning of when I started. Um, I originally planned on being a financial advisor and, you know, being a jack of all trades and in, in financial planning. That was back in 2005. And then over time, I grew to really um, not like the investment side of things or, or more so that I just enjoyed the insurance side more. Right. So I gravitated more to the insurance and did all sorts of different insurance, life and disability, long term care. And then um, 10 years ago, a group asked me to be their Medicare resource. And I was really apprehensive about it because it was just totally new for me. And uh, it just blew up from there. And it's gotten to a point where this is all I do. I just do Medicare. I don't do any other insurance. Uh, all right. As far as the, the YouTube channel. As I helped Medicare beneficiaries, all sorts of topics and situations popped up. And I thought, man, that'd be really nice to have a video that just explains that, uh, save me a little time, you know, how to enroll in Medicare, how to appeal a high income Medicare premium, stuff like that. So in 2019, early in the year, I started researching on, you know, how to create a YouTube channel and, and uh, started uh, putting together some videos and my brother who has a, a, a editing background, a videography background. He helped me with those on the side. And uh, even though he was working full-time with another company and uh, we've done, I don't know, 30 plus videos since then. So that's awesome. That's great. And um, I've, I've watched some of, I've watched several of your videos and you do a great job. I mean, it's really good material. It's very helpful um, for people. It's very digestible. Um one thing I thought we could talk about a little bit on, on this podcast today to anybody that might be listening at home um, that might be getting on to Medicare is w- I think, you know, you've seen multiple different situations of people turning 65 in Medicare. So have I. Um, and it, it can be very stressful for somebody, right? It can be very stressful. It can be a lot on their plate. It can feel overwhelming. Um, is there any mistakes that people make maybe regularly? That you that that you have seen over the years through your 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 experience that come to mind that that maybe like if people just knew this little thing it might help them avoid those mistakes. Any of those come to mind to you? 
Yeah, there's there's a ton. So we'll just kind of see what pops up here. But yeah. I, I would say the the first thing is um, is starting too late. So I know that right. it's it, it's probably never fun realizing that you're turning 65 and and facing up to the music on that. But I would say starting your research six to 12 months prior, just kind of getting yourself ready. Uh, I, I'm that kind of person where if I'm going to make a big decision, I, I plan it out ahead of time. So if you can do any sort of research ahead of time, that's great. Um, so avoid starting late would be a good thing. And then also really two years prior to turning 65, you need to think about how you're filing your tax returns. So if you're married and you file jointly, then okay, you're probably fine there, but some people will file their taxes separately. And the way that Medicare does it, and you know this, if you individually go over uh, a certain amount, uh, 88,000 is the, the number this year, you might've saved a bunch of money on your taxes, but your Medicare premiums are gonna skyrocket if you right. uh, file separately. So that's a really big mistake that I think people are totally unaware of. And some accountants don't um, give people heads up on that. Yeah. And that, that, that's a big one. That's a big one. I mean, um, and if anybody that, you know, doesn't know what Andy's talking about, he's talking about um, some, a program known as, as IRMA, essentially, that the federal government puts into place where, um, and IRMA stands for income related monthly adjustment. Um, Essentially, what it means is if you make too much money, they make you pay more for your Medicare Part B premiums. They make you pay more for your Medicare Part D premiums. Essentially, you know, a little monthly adjustment is what they call it. They don't, I mean, they don't like us saying this, but like I call it a penalty. <laughs> I don't know what else. I don't know how you can argue that it's not. Um, but yeah, I mean, that that's huge, you know, because if you can prevent that, I mean, it can be a big difference in terms of what you pay monthly. Right. And then with the reason why I said two years ahead of time is because they look back at your tax returns two years ago to determine that. So right. yeah, around 62, 63 is really when you got to start thinking about Medicare, surprisingly. So yeah. And, and people don't think about that, right? Like people are just like, oh, I don't want to think about that. You know, they're, they're thinking like forward to when they're 65 and they're like, oh, I don't even want to think about that. I want to deal with that right now. But like, those are things that you need to be considering at that point in time, because it can impact you as you grow older, you don't get to age 65. Um, I wanted to shift gears a little bit to that question. I think it's a good transition. What is typically your recommendation for how, if someone came to you, let's say, and they were, you know, let's say 63, let's use that as an example. And they said, when should I start preparing for Medicare? When should I start looking into Medicare? When should I start, you know, getting my options explained to me. Um, and they're a couple of years away. What is usually your advice in terms of the timeline and when they should start the process of, of educating themselves and what their choices are? Yeah, I would say that the first thing is anytime uh, prior to 65, create a My Social Security online account, get that out of the way, because you don't yeah. want to be trying to fumble through that uh, at the last moment and doesn't work and, and you know something doesn't <laughs> match up. There's, it's yes. frustrating. Um, so set that account up because that's where you enroll in Medicare is through the Social Security Administration. As far as the, um, the plans and options, I don't know if I would spend too much time focusing on the plans just yet. I would more think about what your situation is. You know, where are you getting health insurance currently? Are you covered through an employer health plan based on your active work or a spouse's active work? If that's the case, you're really just kind of looking at what you have and you might actually be able to delay enrolling in Medicare uh, depending on the size of your employer and what the coverage and cost looks like. If you're in an individual health plan through marketplace or your coverage ends at 65 because you retired prior to 65 and your employer says, hey, we're, we're done with you at this point, then it's a different uh, discussion, a different analysis. You're just saying, okay, I'm moving forward what do I need to do? So it can be incredibly uh, daunting uh, task to, to address this when you're first um, eligible, because we all know, and all the listeners of your podcast are the ones that are receiving all those advertisements by mail right. and you know TV and everything. And it, it's to the point where it's really not even helpful because it's just so much. So what I would say is just really kind of clear out that 
that riffraff as much as possible. And whatever you hear, take it with a grain of salt because they are marketing you, they are misleading you, trying to get you to take action, trying to make uh, the, the, um, the data, the, the item that comes to you in the mail look like it's official and from Medicare or Social Security, but it, it's, it's unfortunate that's what happens. So I would say in that like six to 12 months prior to your 65th birthday, that's when you gotta think about how are you covered first of all, and then should I even look at enrolling in Medicare and these supplemental plans at all? Right, right, absolutely. Like it's, it's, it's crazy the, the day and age we live in for people on Medicare. Like I thought when I got started in the business when I was 20 years old that it was bad because of all the mailings and you know there were TV commercials back then but not quite as many. Nowadays, we got TV commercials where, where they will take a benefit that somebody gets if they're on Medicaid or there may be, maybe there's a plan in Florida and like three or four counties that offer the, a, ben, a certain benefit and they'll run the ad in all 50 states, like all over the place. And they're just, and you know, they're just trying to get a, they're just trying to hook people. They're trying to get people to pick up the phone and contact them. And um, I, I think it's really hard on people, you know, that are on Medicare, you know, because there, there's so much confusion. Like they might go talk to an Andy or a Christian and, you know, we break down truthfully what their benefits are and what they qualify for, but then they run out and they see a TV commercial that says, oh, you might be able to get this, 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 and this. And they're like, well, Andy didn't tell me about that. Or Christian didn't tell me about that, but it's because they don't qualify for it, right? Like there's just a finite amount of the population that will qualify for this, but those TV commercials make it sound like everybody can, you know? So it's, it's, I, I, I feel bad almost <laughs> for people on Medicare yeah. because, and people turn 65 particularly because it's just it's more um, inundation than I think we've ever seen before. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Medicare. What I call it is, is Medicare FOMO. Yeah. So you, <laughs> yes. You know, you, you, everybody hears about it and they're like, I feel like I'm missing out on the boat or uh, do I, uh, I want to get this. And then sometimes you're telling a person, you already have that. You already have all those benefits right. that you heard on the TV. It's right. in your plan. So it's, uh, it's tough for sure. Yeah. Um, let's, Andy, let me shift gears over to a different topic that I wanted to pick your brain about for the audience. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, me, Medicare products for a second, right? The different kind of products. And it's, an, it's a question we've asked every single guest we've ever had on the podcast. Um, it's definitely a million dollar question and it's a tough one to answer. And I don't mean to put you on the spot, but um, Medicare, so when someone turns 65 and they're actually taking Medicare, right? Typically, their, their, their choices come down to, first and foremost, do you want a Medicare Advantage plan or do you want a Medicare Supplement plan with a, with, a, with a Part D drug plan? It's a tough thing to say. Obviously, there's no you know, silver bullet or there's no perfect situation for everybody. But if you had to go one way or the other, Medicare Advantage, Medicare Supplement, or lean a certain way, which way would you lean and why? Yeah, I'm, I'm a conservative guy, so I would I would lean towards the original Medicare route if I were, you know, in in the you know, Medicare beneficiary shoes making this choice. There are things I like about both sides, right? But I probably lean towards the original Medicare side. Um, and I always tell people too, if they, if they start there, it's pretty easy to move the other way uh, over to Medicare Advantage, not necessarily the reverse. So I lean towards the Medigap, kind of the for sure thing, a little bit more um, defined situation, no big surprises. But there's a lot of great things going on in Medicare Advantage uh, with, with the benefits. Medicare c continues to, to improve it and, and give the carriers more flexibility in what they can and can't do. Um, even those uh, like medical savings account version Medicare Advantage plans are, I think are really cool. And I'd like to see where those head in the next uh, several years. But probably would say the, the original Medicare and Medigap to start and then the Medicare Advantage side. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I'd happen to agree with you. <laughs> you know, um, I, I did a podcast myself episode where I put myself on the spot and answered the question a couple about a year or two ago. And, and that's kind of the conclusion I came to as well. Cause I, I just feel like obviously, you know, no situation is exactly the same for everybody. Everybody's going to be a little different. Um, however, I feel like, you know, when, when you're, 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 you can almost make an argument that you're never going to be screwed over on a supplement, you know, like no matter what happens to you, 
in terms of your health, you're going to be as well protected as you can be. Whereas there's much more potential for risk with a Medicare Advantage in most places, you know. And so, not that Medicare Advantage isn't great, you know. We we do a whole bunch of them for a lot of people because they fit well with people's situations. But yeah, I think you know that conservative route is probably where I would lean as well. Um. So yeah, yeah, Andy. Yeah, and the way we present it, and I know you 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 probably do too, is just to lay out the positives and negatives of both. Let the person decide. Um, somebody's having a difficult time deciding, then, you know, we can step in and help a little bit more on um, which route to go. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. Well, um, last question I have for you, Andy, um, cause I want to be respectful of your time. Um, can you talk a little bit about your YouTube channel, how people can find it, how people can get in touch with your company? Um, what is kind of the mission of your YouTube channel? Um, just pl- talk about that for just a moment. So we so people that are listening might be able to find the YouTube channel and then also talk about two part question. How can they get in touch with you? If something you said resonated with them and they might be in, in Ohio and they might need, you know, to get some help with their Medicare, how can they get in touch with you? And then do you service any other States other than Idaho? So uh, Ohio, excuse me. So that yeah. it's kind of a three part question. <laughs> Yeah, so um, you can reach us a couple different ways. There's our website, so that's MedicareMindset.com. So that has all of our contact information and, and links to various things like our blog posts that we do weekly and our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is very easy. It's it's uh, once you get there on YouTube, you just type in Medicare Mindset and you'll find uh, our page. And there's tons of videos. I'm hopeful that if you went on there, there would be something that you could could pull from it that would be um, relevant to you. Um, as far as uh, states, uh, I'm, I'm in Ohio, but we have uh, nine total states. So we're Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Illinois, Tennessee, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida. So really nothing West Coast where, where you're at, but uh, we have um, uh, the, the East side for a pretty good chunk there. That's great. That's great. Um... Folks, if if you need help with your Medicare and you're in one of those areas and something Andy said really resonated with you, you just need some some assistance. I mean, he's he's as good as they get. So you should reach out to him. You should get at the very least go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Um, And Andy, thanks for taking the time today. I know you're a busy guy. Yeah, thank you. Great chatting with you. Hey, my pleasure. Um, Folks, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to this episode. Watch this video. Um, If you got something out of it, watching on YouTube, drop a like subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're notified when we upload, comment your thoughts in the comment section. If you're listening to us on the podcast platform, do us a favor, leave us a five-star review if the platform allows it because it helps us reach more people just like you. Um, We'll be back next time and um, happy Medicare.